This is Spoken Gospel. We're dedicated to seeing Jesus in all of Scripture. In each episode, we see what's happening in a biblical text and how it sheds light on Jesus and his gospel. Let's jump in. Israel and Judah's persistent idolatry is pushing God's people toward inevitable spiritual, physical, and national death by Assyria's hands. In Israel, Jeroboam II is murdered by Zechariah, who six months later is assassinated by Shalom. One month later, Shalom is killed by Menahem. In an attempt to stabilize power and assuage Assyria's landlust, Menahem levies extreme taxes from his people. This means that when his son inherits the kingdom, it's drained of its wealth and vulnerable to Pekah, the mutinous captain of his military. Pekka then steals the throne, but loses several strategic cities and tribal land to the hungry Syrians. Pekka's failures lead Hoshea, Israel's final king, to conspire and kill him. <laughs> Still under pressure from Assyria, Hoshea tries to secure an alliance with Egypt, but it backfires. Assyria discovers the treachery, imprisons Hoshea, invades Israel, and carries the Israelites into exile. Hoshea means salvation, but Israel is damned under Hoshea's idolatrous rule. During this same period of time, Judah is only slightly better off. We're told Amaziah, his son, and his grandson do right in God's eyes, although not like their forefather David. All three of them tolerate similar idolatries, and each pays a price for it. Amaziah is assassinated, his son is leprous, and his grandson is plagued by conflict with Syria and Israel. When Amaziah's next descendant, Ahaz, takes Judah's throne, he's the first king in decades to do evil in God's eyes, and the first king in Judah's history to sacrifice his own son to a pagan god. Judah is on the same idolatrous death march as Israel. Ahaz even strips God's temple of its silver and gold to pay Assyrian mercenaries to attack Syria and Israel. Then, in symbolic deference to Assyria and her gods, Ahaz rapes the temple further and replaces the altar God designed with a copy of the Assyrian one. The record of this period of Israel's history ends with an interpretation. Assyria carried off Israel because both Israel and Judah failed to fear, worship, and love God alone. On Mount Sinai, God gave Israel 10 commandments, and 10 violations of those commandments are listed here. Israel has entirely turned away from the God of life. They prefer the idols of other nations, and so God leaves Israel to their spiritual, physical, and national death. In one sense, Israel and Judah's deaths were self-inflicted, but death is also God's judgment. It wasn't a coincidence that the man named Salvation is the one who destroyed Israel. It was God's irony, proving disobedience always brings death. But while both Israel and Judah are dead in their sins, God is rich in mercy and love towards his people. Earlier in Kings, when a corpse was thrown into faithful Elisha's grave, the Israelite man raised from the dead. And by the death of God's faithful son, Jesus, he will make his people alive once again. If the story has always been disobedience leads to death, what happens when obedience leads to death like it did for Jesus? Just as it was hinted at with Elisha, the Apostle Paul says that when the finally faithful Israelite king dies, he is raised from the dead. And at the name of Jesus, whose name, by the way, like Hosea, also means salvation, at his name, every knee will bow to the true king of life, death, and the world. There is no idol that brings life from the dead. There is no obedience to another God's laws that will end our spiritual, physical, and national death. But when we bow, or better yet, throw ourselves into the tomb of King Jesus, we will rise. 
So I pray that the Holy Spirit would open your eyes to see the God who brings life from the dead. And may you see Jesus as the King whose name means salvation.